Notion just released a new feature that allows you to create flowcharts and pie graphs and more. And that's with the newest code block language, Mermaid. If you don't already know what Mermaid does, essentially it allows you with a certain code language to create flowcharts. Let's just get right into it. Mermaid is going to be located inside of a code block. So inside of the body of a page, go forward slash code and click on code capture a code snippet. And at the top left hand corner, you'll find a list of languages. These are code languages. We're going to search for mermaid. Right next to mermaid, you'll find another drop down menu with code preview and split. Preview is going to give you the graph itself, code, just the code, and split will give you both. We're going to go with split. We're going to create a flowchart here, but Mermaid can allow you to create more than just flowcharts, like pie charts. I'm going to give you the link to the documentation down in the description so you can take a look at all the things you can build with Mermaid. So the first thing I want to do with my flowchart is determine what orientation it has. Am I going left to right, right to left, top to bottom, or bottom to top? Let's say left to right and press enter. For this example, let's plan something like a goals management dashboard. Maybe we have a goals database connected to a projects database, which has a list of tasks inside and other properties. First goals. I'm going to give goals the ID, the unique ID of G and the label of goals. And I'm going to connect it to with two dashes and an arrow to maybe P, the unique ID for project. So we have our unique ID and we can give this any sort of ID, P1, P12, anything. And then inside of these parentheses, the label. I can also make this arrow longer by adding another dash. Now I want to connect my projects to my tasks. One way to do this is to either say P is also connected to maybe project tasks, so PT, and the label can be tasks. Or I could simply say, at the end of projects, create another arrow to PT tasks. I personally like keeping it compact, so I'm going to do the P to PT uh, down below. Let's say in project tasks, we have two options, either a task is complete or incomplete. So I wanna say PT is either, let's just give that a line without an arrow. Incomplete, let's do an idea of IC, incomplete, or it is complete. Tasks is going to be connected to both incomplete and complete. So I'm just going to add an and symbol and say C, complete. Below that, let's add something else. Let's say upon completion of a task, we're going to conduct a review. So upon completion, so C, create an arrow to R, review. And the review will help us create new goals. So to display that, I'm going to create an arrow from review back to goals. R back to G. Pretty straightforward. We don't have a whole lot of context here though. Um, we just simply have arrows going from different nodes. So let's add comments. And by the way, you can change the orientation to TB. That'll be top to bottom with goals at the top and BT with goals at the bottom. I like left to right. Let's add a comment between goals and projects. Right after that arrow, a pipe, two of them, and inside connects to, and maybe from projects to tasks, say has, and from tasks to incomplete and complete, say is. And because we have that and symbol, it will apply to both task is complete or is incomplete. And we can say complete 
needs a review and review creates new goals. I'm going to organize this a little bit and divide some of this code. So you can add comments to the code part without interfering with your graph with the percentage sign. So goals database up here, everything connected from the goals database. This little section is going to be the projects database. And then maybe down here, um, we can say review. I want to add a deadline to projects. So there's going to be subsections here. And what's nice about Notion inside of their code blocks, you can also format your text like bold and underline, changing the colors. So you can organize it like that as well. And let's specify that this is specifically inside of tasks in the projects database. And I'll add another section for deadline, which we'll make in a moment. But first I want to show you how to customize the node shapes. They're all the same shape right now, but I want to change goals, for instance, to a database shape. I can do that by going up to goals and adding brackets around these parentheses. I can do the same thing with projects and nest it inside of brackets. Maybe for incomplete and complete, which are just actions of this property, we'll keep properties as the default shape. Let's create a pill shape for incomplete and complete by doing the opposite and putting these brackets inside of the parentheses. And for review, let's say the review is being conducted in the body of the page. I could maybe use this shape with a double bracket. So now that we have all of that, I can also customize these lines that connect the nodes together, like connects to here. I can maybe make this bold, replace the dashes with equal signs. I can also change this has here to um, a stoppage at the end of a circle. So project has and that's right here. Replace the last dash with an O, lowercase o. Add a stoppage here next to incomplete, an X, because that is the end of the line. Now I could replace this dash with an X. That is the PT is incomplete and complete. However, it's going to change that line for both instances because we have that and. Let's just bring this to a new line instead and say PT is also connected to complete, but we'll keep that just a straight line. I can also create a dotted line. So let's change creates new to a dotted line. I'm going to replace the middle dash with a period and maybe even two periods if you want to make the line longer. In this instance, it doesn't really change. Okay, so let's add another property to projects has deadline. And I want it to be placed right above here. So I'm going to make sure it's above the tasks section, because if it were below, it would show below in here. And I don't really want that. So let's say projects, which is P is connected to have that O at the end has property of project deadline. This is a new node. So PD will be the unique ID and deadline. And just like tasks can be either incomplete or complete, a deadline could be met or overdue. So in the same way, we'll say PD is met, maybe MT for met, or PD is overdue, OV for overdue. And for met and overdue, let's change those also to pill shape. And that is the brackets 
inside of the parentheses for met and overdo. And met is going to be a stoppage there. So I'm going to replace the last dash with a lowercase x. If it's overdue, let's push it four days forward. So I'm going to signal another arrow going this way and then a diamond shape for a formula. So in addition to being overdue, I can even add this to the end here. One, two, three, an arrow and say F O V for formula overdue and say four days. And I could also add a comment here that says push. And change four days to a diamond. That's with curly brackets instead of those parentheses. Awesome. That's what the code looks like so far. Now let's talk about customizing the colors of these nodes. So I want to color maybe goals and projects blue, maybe every property orange and so on. So I recommend doing this. Let's create a section at the top for colors. And define a class. So class, capital D, define, D-E-F. And let's define the color blue. Blue will be filled with this hex color. You could also just say blue, but I want a specific color. And let's change the stroke color or the outline to black. Make sure these are together, no spaces. Change the stroke width to BX and the color of the text to white. Now I want to assign the node with these colors. So maybe for goals and projects, one way to do this is after the label, three colons, and then the name of the class, blue. So that gives me that black border, white text, and blue fill. If I were to go to dark mode, it'll look like this. And I can do the same thing with projects. Three colons, blue. I can copy this paste below and create another class, maybe for orange. Come down to deadline, three colons, orange, and also for tasks. So what I would do is maybe create these colors before you get started so you can easily apply colors as you go. For met and overdue, I can say green for met, red for overdue, red for incomplete, and green for complete. And red, change these colors. Met will be green, complete also green. Incomplete red and overdue will also be red. Awesome. I can also make four days maybe a magenta color. So what I can do down here is instead of filling out a hex uh, code, say magenta, I can just say magenta. And next two, four days, magenta. We've colored these nodes, but how about coloring the links that connect them? Well, I've looked in a lot of different places and this is probably the most efficient way to do it. If you know a more efficient way to style these links, let me know down below. But basically, if you want to style all links, so not specific ones, 
you can use link style default you can change the width of each line change the color just like below and that will change all of them so if i were to say stroke black it'll change everything to a darker color here the only thing with changing all of the link colors is if i go to dark mode it will stay black and it doesn't change like dotted lines just the default regular lines i'm gonna take that away now if you want to customize each individual line like maybe between these two i want it to be blue between projects deadline and tasks orange and so on you'll have to number your links so down below here let's create another section for link colors and what i mean by that is this would be link zero the next link created would be called link one two three four five six and all the way down so I'd have to identify each one and say link style zero. That's grabbing this link up here, stroke blue. And it changes it to blue. Project has deadline would be link one. Make this maybe orange. Projects has tasks link is actually link five. So I can say comma five, which will also be orange. So while you're creating your flowchart, I would number your links. Bit annoying, but this is where link could say zero is. Maybe highlight this purple. Here we have links one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine, two and seven will be green. And three and six will be red. And four will be magenta. And you can also add hex colors to this as well. So it will look something like this. You can change all link styles with link style default or individual links by counting which link you're working with, with zero being the first link, one being the second, two, three, four, and so on down the list. Yes, you can create clickable nodes. So let's create two pages down here. Page goals, this will be our mock goals database and another one for projects to quickly copy a link to a page to your clipboard press command l link to current page copy to clipboard great and now that i have that link let's create another section called clickable links And I do have projects link in my clipboard. Projects is P. So I want to say click P and in quotations that link. Let's do the same thing for goals. This one is G. Click G in quotes. Let's turn this into preview click on goals and it sends us to the goals page projects to projects i can also link to specific database views maybe there's a database view in projects called tasks 
add view called tasks. In a specific database view, I can go to the database menu, copy link to view, and go back and do the same thing. The tasks node has the ID PT, click PT. And when I click on tasks, it should send me specifically to the tasks database view. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you here in this video. This gives you a good rundown of how to use Mermaid specifically for planning a Notion workspace. I hope you guys found that useful. I hope now you have some understanding of how to get started with these Mermaid flowcharts and also how to organize the code. I will provide some more links down in the description for the documentation and also other resources to help you build with Mermaid. And with that being said, I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.